It was the year 31 of our era. Jesus had entered Jerusalem as a king amidst applause and praise. In a very short time, many of those who shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel, would now shout, Crucify him, crucify him, release Barabbas. Jesus knew everything that was about to happen, but first he played the leading role in one of the most shocking scenes in the Bible. From the top of the Mount of Olives, he wept over Jerusalem. And why did Jesus weep? Because of all that would be done to him. No, Jesus' heart was broken as he looked at the beauty of Jerusalem before his eyes, knowing that some 40 years later it would be utterly destroyed. Men, women, and children would be slaughtered without pity. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. Sabbath School Like presents the series, The Great Controversy. Lesson 2, The Central Issue, Love or Selfishness. The Great Controversy, more than a war of arms, is a war of ideas. Ultimately, weapons lead to the first death, which is only a temporary dream for God, and false ideas about God lead to eternal death, which is ultimately what the enemy desires. Therefore, what the enemy has always tried to do since his rebellion in heaven is to degrade the image of God, to blame God for everything bad that happens. But listen well, all evil comes from the devil, and no matter how much the enemy attacks the image of God, God has already shown his true image on the cross. So this week's question is, how does God respond when the devil attacks his image and the image of his church? When the devil attacks, God protects. Remember the dreams that Joseph interpreted for Pharaoh? Yes! In the first, seven lean cows ate seven fat cows. And in the second, seven dry ears of corn swallowed seven beautiful ears of corn. Correct! The two dreams had the same meaning. The fat cows and beautiful ears of corn were seven years of plenty that would come upon the earth. The lean cows and dry ears of corn were seven years of famine that would follow. Listen well, famine on earth is the work of the devil. In the original world created by God, everything worked perfectly. Sin came in and ruined everything. But God, who knew what would happen? What did he do? He revealed that there would be seven years of famine. And he used Joseph to store food during the seven years of plenty, thus saving many lives, including the family of his brother Judah, from whom the Messiah would come centuries later. Have you noticed, when the devil attacks, God protects his people. Something similar happened in the destruction of Jerusalem. God did not send the Roman armies to slaughter his beloved people. They had rejected Christ, and in rejecting him, they had rejected God's protection. The devil would use this to destroy them. But what did Jesus do? He warned them. So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. In 66 AD, the Roman army of Cestius Gallus surrounded the city, but when their attack seemed imminent, they unexpectedly retreated. The Jews pursued them and won a great victory. To flee at that time seemed absurd. Why flee when you are winning the war? But Jesus had said, flee, so the Christians fled to Pella when the Roman general Titus returned to Jerusalem. According to the historian Flavius Josephus, more than a million people died. About a hundred thousand were taken prisoner. And, as Jesus said, not a stone was left upon a stone of the temple. Who survived the devil's attack? Those who listened to the words of Jesus. This is the true image of God. When the devil attacks, God protects his children. When the devil chases around, God's message is spread. Do you remember any hero of faith who was persecuted? Elijah was persecuted by King Ahab and his wife Jezebel. And as he fled, do you remember whom he testified? To a widow in the village of Zarephath. And where was Zarephath? In the pagan region of Tyre and Sidon. Did you notice? Being persecuted is not a good thing. Having to flee is not comfortable for anyone. But because Elijah was persecuted, the message of salvation was able to get to a small village where a poor widow lived, a woman who was going to prepare her last meal to, shortly after that, starve to death with her son. 
Listen up, God's people have always been a persecuted people. And Revelation tells us who the persecutor is. When the woman, which is the church, was about to give birth, the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Who was that son? Jesus. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, that they should feed her there 1,260 days. The persecutor is the dragon, the devil. The persecuted one is the church. But whenever the devil persecuted God, he did the same as Elijah did. He spread the message. After the ascension of Christ, the disciples were threatened, imprisoned, persecuted, and killed. What was the purpose of the devil? To stop the gospel. What was the result? Quite the opposite. The gospel got spread all around the world. In some cases, even killers themselves, such as Saul of Tarsus, who murdered Stephen, ended up converting into Christianity. Saul became Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles. Definitely, when the devil persecutes, God's message gets spread. When the devil destroys, God restores. The devil does not only cause wars and persecution. He is the one behind all mental and spiritual illnesses. Jesus said it clearly when referring to the devil as the thief of the sheep. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. That is why Jesus spent most of his time healing, liberating and restoring. Correct, because when the devil destroys, God restores. Listen up, the COVID-19 pandemic is not the first pandemic in history. In AD 160 and 265, two devastating pandemics ravaged the world. These plagues killed tens of thousands of people and left entire towns and cities with almost no inhabitants. But Christians stepped forward and became an army of nursing individuals who cared for the sick and dying. Many Christians lost their lives caring for others. But in time, thousands and eventually hundreds of thousands and then millions in the Roman Empire became believers in Jesus during these two epidemics. In this great conflict, our enemy wants to destroy the image of a loving God. He wants to implant the idea that God is indifferent to evil but it is the enemy who generates evil. He used Joseph's brothers to harm him, but God used those circumstances to save lives. He used Titus to destroy Jerusalem, but God used those circumstances to show his love for his people. He used Jews and Romans to persecute, but God used the circumstances to spread the message of salvation. Are you suffering attacks, persecution, or sickness? It wasn't God. Just let him show you his true image, and he will turn your tears into victories. Fear not, for I am with you. Do not faint, for I am your God who strengthens you. I will always help you. I will always uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Sabbath School Like invites you to continue studying the series, The Great Controversy. Don't forget to share this video and subscribe to our channel. It's totally free. Remember that together we can grow more.